And while you at it peeping this shit, go ahead to youtube.com backslash waterway TV and subscribe to that shit. Yeah, you know the waves in it. Baseball, we're hitting a home run, hit it with the coldest rings. And even on my bad days, I'm a clutch to finish. The track diminished, the booth burnt hands is itching. Damn. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to a new Waterwave TV interviews. Today we got Party Alone in the building. Party Alone with a D. Don't get it mixed up. How yeah. are you feeling? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, first question I want to get into is how you got your name, Party Alone. Um, so actually, me, it was my cousin really like came up with it. You know what okay. I'm saying? Because I I first had Party Alone with X's, so mm -hmm. it was like P X A or P X R. T Y X L O N E, like the X instead of the A is mm, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was like, "You should just add a D." And I was like, "Oh." And then we just like ran with it, and then mm -hmm. yeah, and then slowly over time it started to like make sense about like what we could do with it. You yeah, know what I'm saying so. Shout out him. Became original. It's a yeah. very. It's like original with when you put the D in there. I feel yeah, like it's absolutely. not. Yeah, very original. Absolutely. But uh, congratulations on all your success recently. You, Definitely been going up. I feel like when I first met you at a. Uh, uh, the the festival, the Minnesota festival yeah. that they did at First Ave, mm -hmm. I feel like that was like kind of that was like a year ago or yeah, almost now. So like a lot has changed. Too. I feel like since yeah. then. Um, but yeah, congrats on all your all your success. So you're from Minnesota, correct? Correct. Big Lake. Yeah. That's what Big I heard. Lake. Yeah. What What's it like growing up in Big Lake? I've it's never so been there. I don't think. Maybe for like a sporting event or something. But it's cool. It's it's dope. I mean, again, like that's where I grew up. So it's like a really like tight knit. Mm -hmm. little skater like rebel community that we're in you know so it's like all of us always hang out at the beach like park our cars in the line and just like kick it so mm -hmm. it's like it's really like a family based like friend group mm -hmm. and it's super tight opposed to being like out here and just like fucking with everybody you know what i'm saying so it's like it's dope and yeah and i think coming from like like it's big lake like a small town or is yeah. it just low pop because it, it's probably is it like a big area it's just small. low population it's small you drive through that shit in like five minutes oh damn yeah just so like small. 10 just yeah go. and i think i think there's some key to coming from a, a small place like or a small town because you everybody kind of knows you even in minneapolis a lot of people know you but there's yeah. a lot of competition absolutely but like being from a small town you can really connect with everybody that is willing to support you because yeah, they like got no one else to support anyway yeah. you can like personally connect with them you know so it's not just like oh what up i fuck with you it's like nah like what up yeah you know like yeah you said uh like skate you were you a skater mm -hmm. or are you still a skater still you still skate, skate? yeah yeah it's i haven't skated like i just when i came back to minnesota this trip this was the first time i skated in like seven months yeah. so i was just trash i could never learn how to skate figure out the skating shit i, I can try to do like a ollie uh, all you like just standing still but i can't like skate yeah like, i can't <laughs> yeah. do the motion of like moving my that. leg keeping it on that. the board and shit um, but yeah, you're from Big Lake. Uh, when did you move to California? Damn, probably like five months, five months ago. Five okay. Months, something like that, yeah. Was that basically just to chase the music dream or were you always planning on getting out of Minnesota, going somewhere warm? It, I, I had no plan of it. It was uh, kind of the last winter. I got like, I was super fucked up and I had like, just like really depressed and just like not well, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, fuck it. Like I sold everything and then I was like, I'm just going to go to Cali. I don't know what's going to happen. And I just went out. And then, you know, so things just started, like, happening. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit, like, we could probably do this. So from there, it was kind of like, oh, wow. Like, I saw the opportunity and, like, the possibilities. So it was just kind of like a just take type it. of thing. Yeah, yeah I've, like, I've definitely heard that story. We had another guy in the podcast that said he sold everything and moved to – it was either Cali or Scottsdale yeah, or some bro. shit like that, and and um and then it, whatever it was like hard at first, and then he got an opportunity and it just started paying off for him. So it's definitely like a story that gets told that it's like it's it's, a, it's definitely a risk because you see all the people that are out there living homeless and living yeah. like in poverty out there. Not but for sure. but I mean, yeah. if you got the talent, you got the you got the plan. You got to at least go with the plan. Yeah, so it's bro. Like, Cali's such a weird like place to just be able to like you can literally do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, like, unheard of. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, like, there isn't, like, a, like, I could, like, actually do what I'm doing now or, like, I could honestly be, like, fucked and homeless. Mm -hmm. You know? So it was like, I'm willing to, like, take that, like, and just go, like. I feel that. Uh, what is, so going out there, how big was your team moving out there? And then how, like, how, what's your team looking like now, like, music-wise? I was just, me and Jake, 
uh, as far as going out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but he he was kind of already out there before I moved out there. Um, and then he was working with Sam, and now Sam is a part of the team. And that's that's really as far as like day to day. That's really mm-hmm. it, you know. What's like the studio life for you? You have like producers and engineers you work with mainly, or is it kind of um mixed? with with the whole like moving to Cali thing? I've yeah. I've gotten like the opportunity to work hand in hand with more uh, producers and you know engineers, just more creatives. Um, but before that, it was just like kids from Germany sending me beats, mm-hmm. you know, and they were, they were like hard. So I was like, oh, it works, you know what I'm saying? But there's there's a select few people that I'm kind of like building relationships with because I, I don't really like to just like, yo, this is a uh, Jaden, like you just cook it up with him for the day. Like, no, nah, I'd rather like build a relationship with somebody and yeah. then like, you know, like catch a vibe. So um, there's there's a few people now that I'm like working like hand in hand with and it's it's dope. That's really the way yeah, to go. Like absolutely. having having a team like you have Jake is your manager and cameraman and then Sam who just joined the team. I've met him last night. Seems like he has a lot of good connections and a very absolutely. good head on his shoulders. It's like having like a good team behind you is really everything you need to like succeed. And absolutely. regardless if it's if you're trying to make money to pay rent or you're trying to blow up, like you gotta just have people around you to stay consistent with to grow with. Um I want to talk about how kind of how you became so successful. I know TikTok is a big thing for you. Yeah, TikTok for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What, what did you do? Like, what what was what was the TikTok that like kind of gave you that following, or what was the the consistency that you had to do to make it work? Um, it was, we were posting every day, like mm-hmm. a couple times every day. Um, and then the TikTok that worked was we. I forgot what we were doing. We were fucking. Um, we came home from something and I was like, I was like, oh fuck, you gotta post. He's like, well, you gotta post something. I was like, oh, this fucking this song, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I did it on the porch, and then like the next day, it was mm-hmm. like some million. My mom's hitting me up like, yo, what the hell? Like, I was mm-hmm. like, oh shit, like I'm going on my TikTok and it just keeps going, going, going. I was like, oh, now we gotta post, post, post. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think not just sitting on it and being like, wow it's cool like but keep going and like keep posting even if you know the next video gets whatever Mm -hmm. so i think just keep posting and staying consistent after the video kind of started popping off Mm -hmm. made the video do what it did and kind of brought that fan base in harder yeah i think that's the one like the one of you maybe playing like the I don't know what instrument it is. Ukulele. Not guitar, but yeah, ukulele, ukulele That's on the my court. Shit. Yeah, I, I seen the here. like No Jumper posted that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I seen like a couple other blogs started posting you kind of around that same time No Jumper did. So like that that was definitely like it's yeah, working. It's and I seen a there's like like tick the TikTok uh exposure is almost like the new the new way for industries to find it's to free find too. A, like to find artists it seems yeah, like nowadays you don't too. gotta pay nothing like, yeah it's free so it's like where, it. it's where everyone's at it's where the most eyes are at like it yeah. changes it used to be youtube and it used to be instagram it used to Absolutely. be twitter so it's like where the, ch- the shift was coming and i don't know if you follow gary v at all or like Love listen to him at all like he was he, he was preaching it for the past two three years though like tiktok's gonna be the next big thing so it's like you better get on it sooner than nice, later bro. And it's like I was I, I'm finally like posting at least like once a day of just mm. like random shit around the store because like the store shit kind of hits. But like yeah. um, I've been trying to get as many people into it as possible. But it's all like sooner than later. But it is almost a little late at this point. Like if, if, nah. if you're just starting, you're a little behind. But like you could still hit tomorrow, you yeah, know, like nah, but like not too late. He just made a new account. So I mean, he, you know what I'm saying. It's it can definitely go up. New people blow up every day. Yeah. Like, what do you? Uh, have you seen? So I see pe- when people do like the open verse challenges things on TikTok. I those go that. viral, yeah. and I've been seeing some like uh, some labels and whatnot. They'll have like someone do the 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 open verse challenge, and then someone will do the duet, and then like, it, but it'll be like kind of planned from the start yeah. that it's gonna go viral, and then they'll do a whole music video together. They'll, like, yeah, they'll, that's actually dope. I seen that happen. I didn't I know if seen it, yeah, it's like almost like the new marketing tactic yeah. for labels out here, and it's like interesting how how labels are using the TikTok space to to make to like build these stars up and it's like it's so interesting because it's like they're they're noticing what's happened naturally and they're like oh we can make that happen like in-house yeah yeah yeah, for sure it's like a big space for all that um but yeah uh, i guess yeah uh talked about like the blog sites posting about you is there any like when you've seen like let's say no jumper post your thing or i think like 
like maybe our generation music might have mm-hmm. posted something about you too i believe was that like a sign of like shit like this is working or was there a time Absolutely. way before then that like it was like the streams are hitting or whatnot but, i think the tiktok was mm-hmm. i think i think the tiktok blowing up and being like oh this will work you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. if i keep being like a very like relatable person like very vulnerable i think that's like that's what music needs to be you know instead of just like no 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 like no, I want you to like feel and like have a picture in your head of what I'm saying. So I think that and like all the people like hitting me up like, wow, like this is how I relate to this. And like, this is like, you changed my life. You saved me. Mm-hmm. So I think that was more than like a post on a, a site for me. Yeah. You know? yeah so your music has a very relatable touch to it. And I'd say the way that you push your music to and like paint like um, or project your image of like, um, like heartbreaks and stuff like mm-hmm. that and and um you talk about your stories of like what you've had with drug use in the past and whatnot like you very your like your music's very relatable and that keys into a lot of people for actually like wanting to hear your story yeah. not just like oh this sounds good for like sure. what is he saying what is this guy's life about absolutely you know who absolutely. who is this guy um you knew a single not a home is doing great numbers like yeah. it's, uh, over two million on spotify and i yeah. seen like your spotify number you just passed five hundred thousand monthly yeah, listeners like that's sick. yeah congrats on that Thank like that's you, like that's huge like that just shows like the consistency that's working um and uh the song sincerely fuck you i'm curious who is who were you saying fuck you to oh uh, my ex your ex yeah is she was that like a, a heartbreak and that kind of inspired some music or how did how Absolutely. does that go down like she she was a reason like why i like started making music like realistically you mm-hmm. know so i mean she, she she was a person for me that kind of like really made me like slow down and like analyze like the little things in life you know like how does the grass smell how does it feel type of type of uh girl you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like look at the stars type of person so i was like oh wow like and then she just fucked me over so so then it was so then you got to pour out your feelings into the mic basically yeah type like of i mean like we broke up and that's when i like had dropped like three albums in a year just because i because i wasn't like doing trying to do music serious you mm-hmm. know i was just trying to like vent and like cope because mm-hmm. like, and then it just turned into people being like yo like became I relatable it, you know yeah. like i feel you and i was like shit like okay, you bet like mm-hmm. so i just kept going and it was like very therapeutic you know and that was the biggest thing for me is just to like get that weight off my chest so mm-hmm yeah. I feel that. Uh, another thing I noticed with you too, you have the four 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 tatted. Yeah. Um, are you very spiritual when it comes absolutely. down to that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm get. I'm like, I'm like one foot in, one foot out of absolutely. like the spirituality. I'm really into. It. I I definitely see the numbers, and I, that's where my end of it is. But I need to like, I guess you could say, meditate more and like really yeah. do this shit for real more because like <laughs> when I do, it calms me down a lot. Especially like. Like I haven't did it in a long time, but like taking like mushrooms and meditating yeah, and yeah, like yeah. listening to the right frequencies and shit, like that's like key for like personally for uh, just being able to keep going for and sure. give my mental a break. Um, sure. But when did like your spiritual journey like start for you, and like what does it mean to you? That means everything mm-hmm. for sure. I'm I'm very. I let God guide me, like twenty four seven. You know, so I'm very just like whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Like I'm live through me, you know. Um but it started like two years ago probably, you know, around the time of like the breakup. I think the breakup might have been two and a half, three, two, something around there. Um but it was like more of like a exper like 'cause I never used to believe either. Like my dad's very like science and like fucking like you know what I'm saying? And then mm-hmm. my mom's super spiritual so I was kinda like just taking both sides in I didn't really know yeah. what to think like I was like but dad said like you know mm-hmm. type of thing um but I had like some I had experiences to where I actually like was like wow like you know like I just break down crying in like a church and then just be like what the fuck like I, you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like just was like a wave of energy and I was yeah. like wow like this is real you know what I'm saying so I just like gave my trust to that and it was like it worked you know what i'm saying like now i'm a full believer 100 mm-hmm. percent. like yeah. yeah i'm like yeah i'm I'm like a full believer and like basically you could just call even just manifestation of just of speaking Absolutely. shit into existence Absolutely. like 
noticing like the numbers around you noticing like when you're talking about an idea and all of a sudden a car drives by and it's 444 or, yeah. or like your spirit number like my spirit number is 14 i see it everywhere whenever i'm whenever i'm thinking about like a good idea or like should i be doing this like debating something drive and all of a sudden i'll drive past a highway sign and it's just like that number and yeah, it's just bro. like it's like something like that most people in this world will look past it and not think anything of it besides just be like besides of it meaning nothing yeah like, but it really can mean something especially if you think it means something and you make it mean something in your it head means something. yeah, yeah it, absolutely, it means something bro. it's just an energy it's yeah. perspective too that's like we're all this shit that's like basically how I'm, i mean same with you too like how all this shit got built like just off of the strength of believing absolutely. and saying it's gonna happen instead of like like my homie reese is super spiritual like we always talk about like i'm trying like we always say like i'm trying to get rich or like i want a bunch of money yeah. but you say i am rich i want i have a bunch that's of money saying, that's like yeah. that's the first step of saying you have the things you want and then all of a sudden it's just gonna be normal that's so when you're ready for when that shit does happen that's why i am i used to be like i used to get really mad at people like oh like if you blow up then mm-hmm. it's like not nah, when when you blow when up I blow up like what this is what's gonna happen you, you know what it. i'm saying then mm-hmm. i get like mad at my friends i'll be like bro like leave like nah yeah it's when not if you know like you can tell when people have like zero spirituality like belief in them oh, or like no like history of at least giving it a try or like understanding know, like, and you can just like without even having a conversation with them you can almost just feel it like in the room it's just weird it's, it is really weird um you talk about like your history with drugs a lot in your music what is like i guess like your status with that was it like a problem that you had or is it just like so you never really like went overboard with it um, or how'd that go I mean, I did at one point. Mm-hmm. Again, this is all kind of like going back to the breakup. Yeah. Um, and it was just like bad. I like met another girl after that who like really was like, here's everything, like take this, things mm-hmm. like that. And I was yeah. like, wow, like it, it like filled a, a void that I was like missing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah, I got carried away and then. I'm good now, though. Mm-hmm. For sure, I'm yeah. great now. Yeah. You'd say maybe the music kind of helped you f- fill the void instead of like the drugs at some point, or what? I think. How did you? Because there are a lot of kids that you know go through a breakup or have uh, stressful times, and they don't know how to get out of the yeah. the drug times. So, like, what what advice would you give to someone that maybe needs to get out of that little that drug phase or whatever? I guess. I mean, it's just give give yourself time to feel. You know, like give give yourself time to literally just feel. And, mm-hmm. like, for me, it was, like, the spiritual aspect of it. So I was, like, going to God and, like, going to church, like, religiously, like, really mm-hmm. going. And then just, like, finding myself. I say, like, the last, like, two years has been me, like, trying to find myself. And now it's kind of, like, I kind of have, like, a clear view of, like, what I want to be and, like, who I am. So it's, like, I think it made it easier for me because I was, like, I know how I want to like fix this like I want to do music I want to help people I want to guide other people so I think with that being said like it, it just made it so much easier to kind of like steer away from the shit that wasn't allow- allowing me to do so you know mm-hmm. facts so yeah if you're out there and you're going through it man it's easy to get out of it well not easy yeah, probably man. but it's it's possible it is got to find your purpose because so I feel it like, because I even like I never really dove too deep into like a lot of the hard drugs but i smoke weed a lot and i even find myself like getting into too many like cloudy days of just smoking weed and not getting shit done and then just feeling like shit after like it's cool in the moment and it definitely hides a lot of the pain or like a lot of the like negative thoughts you may have but it's it's just like that balance of being productive and and whatnot i feel that well one thing i seen this was one one thing i seen i was like this guy is Give give it a few months and he's gonna be on every fucking magazine billboard cover that is gonna be out there. You you had uh, your song "Addict" was in the Nelk video. Oh yeah, you seen that? Those are our homies. Bro. Yeah, how did how did that happen? I guess um, like I don't know who chooses cousin, their intro. Music. Cousin Jay, he's like actually I met Nick. Uh, Nick is one of Steve's editors. Oh yeah. And I met him first, and he, he makes music too. So mm-hmm. it was like oh like he, he was hard, you know. I was like yeah, you're hard, bro. Like. And just trying to like you know build that connection because he's a dope person um and then from there it just got passed down mm-hmm. and it was like cousin jay um adrian like you know like everybody just like kind of caught on to they got it. tapped in yeah and like salim like so they they came to la and they were like let's link and i was like let's link and mm-hmm. we grabbed lunch and everybody it was just cool energy so it was like me jay salim adrian jake I think that was it. 
Yeah, that's yeah. dope. What and do you? I oh, keep going. We just, yeah, we just ate food and then hit the the bungalow or whatever. It's a bar and we just got fucking drunk as hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and say so like, what is, what's their vibe like in person compared to like the energy they bring online? It's. I mean, I I never really like followed them like that online, mm-hmm. so it's like I, I didn't really have any like expectations of like, oh, this dude's gonna be super cocky. Like, yeah. No, it was just like. I know he had to like take her his day because I think Celine just dropped a video, so I was like, he was like, you know, doing uh, online yeah. on his phone the whole time. But when we got all got drunk, it was like good energy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's when like the purest version of you is. I think mm-hmm. it's just like, what up, bro? Like then it's like, oh, you're yeah, like I fuck with you. So yeah, that's dope. Is there a? I guess that could maybe be one opportunity that you maybe wouldn't have got if you didn't move to LA. Is there any other opportunities that have came by that like? basically were because of like someone you met in person from living out there or is most of your stuff just kind of came man online? i think like all this like wouldn't have happened everything i'm doing now would i don't think would have happened if i wouldn't have went to la you know like mm-hmm. i'm a huge like believer in like opportunities and like even if it's like you could be fucked at the end of the day like take it you know like so i don't know mm-hmm. it's hard to tell you know like it, it's it's a hard that's a hard question, but I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what's a so I'd say your image online is like super perfect. Like your what you're portraying, like on social media and just the way you carry yourself. It just you, you look like you know what you're doing. You look like a, a verified artist. You're certified. Yeah, you know what so. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like I'd say, like a lot of people don't have that right image for an artist to like really pop, and that's one thing that like people look for in the industry to make mm. sure like fans that are looking for new artists to listen to they want to see the full package yeah. so what what like inspires your 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 style i guess big lake really yeah did you always kind of have like colorful hair and like yeah like you it know like bad before though. like <laughs> dressed up and like chains like yeah. you know like i mean like I, I had went through a phase like early where i was like damn like i see everybody with chains and i'm like i just got a fucking like bulky chain and like you know what i'm saying like i was trying to get so much jewelry and just like everything but like now it was like actually like i think i'm cool yeah, I just got here, actually. <laughs> it's all right or one of our homies just got here to oh word get ready for the store <laughs> for sure i was like i think like i was just super okay with like wearing like sweatpants and like a sweater you know like i, I just didn't care mm-hmm. so i was like i think that is just yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think just, like, not caring and just, like, remembering where you come from. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I yeah. didn't come from, like, a hype beast, like, place. I didn't come from, like, a like a bougie place. It was like, nah, like, we just skate and wear mm-hmm. oversized fucking pants and shit. Yeah. And also, another part of your steez is all the tattoos you got, too. You can't see too much of them right now. But I seen, you know, one of the, like, live sessions you did with the tank top on you, you got a bunch of oh, tattoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, 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 which, I guess, I'd say, like, what is your favorite tattoo? Or, like, what is, like, kind of the meanings behind getting tattoos for you? The 444 is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you get a new tattoo, like, what are you, what are you trying to get? Is there a meaning behind your tattoos? Or it's like, oh, that, that's cool, and I'm going to remember the day I got I mean, it? Or, like... I'm very just, like spur of the moment you know mm-hmm. like i like i didn't plan the 444 on my face like we just woke up and it was like damn like this is sick like I, i'm gonna get it mm-hmm. and i just got it you know what i'm saying so it was like some of them have meaning and then other ones are just like i want to like become a person that like i wanted to be i mm-hmm. want to be you know what i'm saying and that for me is just getting tattoos and just like yeah. expressing how i feel on myself mm-hmm. so you can like depict it however you want to yeah you know so i need to get some more tattoos me too bro. i've been lacking i think we all do honestly. i'm trying to fill up my sleeve i'm trying to get like sam over there yeah buddy <laughs> <laughs> um i only got a couple more for you uh, what who's like your inspiration in music uh i'd say maybe like the people you looked up to before you started while you're going like the kind of people that you were looking up to bony bear is my number one okay that like group he's, he's they're crazy super like experimental and like I'm a big fan of that. Mm-hmm. I really like that. And it'd be like Lauren Hill, um, Raging Against the Machine, Bob Marley, mm-hmm. super heavy. I don't know, like growing up, it, like Maroon Five, probably. Mm-hmm. Did you have any like musical influence in your house, like that your mom or dad would play all the My time? Dad, for sure. My dad it would be Lauren Hill, Bob Marley, Marvin Gaye. Mm-hmm like of that like realm Mm -hmm. of artists so it's like super like soulful and like super like just like 
deep and like intimate. So it was like, that's where I kind of like pulled a lot of music knowledge from mm-hmm. was my father. When did you know you wanted to make music? Did you start when you're younger, like choir class or learning like band I, I or orchestra? I was in band and choir, but I dropped out. I was like, fuck that. Mm-hmm. Cause I was just, I don't know. I didn't like more organized. Of, more of a freelancer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, I probably, I started making music like religiously like two years ago cause I was in college and then I, for like graphic design and photography and then mm-hmm. I was like, this shit ain't it. Yeah. You know? And then I was, I, I always wrote though. Like I was always a writer. Um, but yeah, like two, two and a half years ago. Yeah. Um, one last thing I want to get, I like to get everybody's um, word on this. What, what's some advice you would give to some younger artists? I'd say we're all pretty young still. So maybe some people that are like in high school trying to decide, do I want to go to college? Do I want to do music? Do I want to chase my dream? What's like a, some advice you would give someone to always keep in the back of their head, like to not forget about while they're going through tough times? That's a good question. I mean, for me, it was, I kind of lost sight of who I was and like where I came from when I, when I like took these opportunities, when I took these, you know, when I went to LA, I got caught up in like the club life and all this shit. I got mm-hmm. caught up in the money, the, the girls, whatever, whatever. And then I had to like, really like you, you everybody has a support system. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Everybody, whether it's, you know, your homie, your mom, your dad, Everybody has someone they can talk to. Mm-hmm. And I think just like making sure that relationship is strong enough for you to be like, yo, like I'm, I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. Like, can you like reach out to people? You know what I'm saying? Like we're only human. We all feel the same. Reach out to people because of your perspective, like if I'm sad, you might not be sad. So you're going to have a different perspective on how I can f- better myself and fix myself. So mm-hmm. Just reach out to people. Make sure you're good. Mm-hmm. You know. All facts. Oh yeah, and one more too. You got a uh, any projects or EPs or albums, any like that on the way that you've been working on, or what's like the next step for Party Alone in, in your camp? Singles. Okay. Singles. Yeah. I'm Fucking going back back and forth with a couple, and then album on the way. Okay. You yeah. got any anything you can hint drop at? You have like any album name ideas or anything like that you want to start up? Any any projects? Any any wisdom? I don't know. I don't even yeah, understand yeah. at this point. I think I think I have an album name. This might be it, it might change. You mm-hmm. know? But I think I'm gonna call it Where Are You Going? Can I Come To? hmm That's it. There you go. Yeah. Well yeah, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe, like all of his socials will be in the link below. I believe it's just party alone, right? Yeah, yeah. With yeah, the D for, sure. for Instagram and whatever else you use, TikTok and all that, but it'll all be in the description below. Uh make sure you subscribe, like, share this interview, tell all your friends about it. Make sure you post this on TikTok because I'm already knowing that's where he be at. Um we need to get our followers up on that's there. Good. I need to post more on there, so that's really on me. Um But yeah, let me know in the comments what you enjoyed most about this. Let me know Tell him what he needs to do next if you're waiting for a song or something. Let Let him know in the comments. Blow it up for us. I think this will be a good one for us. But um, what else do I got to say? Oh, yeah. Shout out all of our sponsors. I forgot to do that a little bit earlier. But we got Sweets Kandamas, the Domi, Northern Chill, the best water in the world. And the Minnesota Twins was our new little addition. They they came and gifted us um, some hats that are just now coming out. Uh, It's called the the twins minnesota series they came in the other day and gifted us some hats and they said if you want to like whatever display them on the podcast too that'd be cool and so yeah we got kind of like a half in half out minnesota twin sponsor for the podcast collaboration working on the way so shout out them for that, shout um, out that yeah and i could definitely if you fuck with kandamas hook you up with a kandama yeah, before you head out yeah we got a bunch of those in stock still here. So, and Sweets Kandamas is a Minnesota company. I don't know if you knew that. Their factory, or not factory, but their warehouse is like a mile that way, not even. It's like really in, in the neighborhood. But yeah. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're listening or watching, I appreciate y'all. Have a good day.